put uh, the mic microphone on. It's on now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Thumma amma ba'd InshaAllah ta'ala today will be our first session going through Al-Wasiyyat al-Sughra by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullahi alayhi and this book or this 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 is a risala it's a small uh, compilation of a response to a risala a letter a message that was given to shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayh um before we go into this inshallah ta'ala just a small nubdha a small just little um you can't even call it a, a biography, but just a small little ta'rif and a small little introduction to who Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, was a scholar of al-Islam, one of the great, you know, people regard him as one of the greatest scholars of al-Islam. And he was born on the 10th of Rabi' al-Awwal um, in the year 661 after the Hijrah. 661 after the Hijrah. So this is this corresponds to the January the 22nd, uh, 1263. So a long time ago, only 700, 700 and a bit years ago, if not more. He was born in Harran. He was born in Harran. Harran is, um, it is now in Southern Turkey, bordering Syria, Syria or Asham in the past. There was no Islam called Syria before. Um, he is the son of Abdul Halim, okay, and he's the grandson of a great alim, Abu al-Barakat, uh, uh, um, uh, Majduddin, Abdul Salam, who was a great alim of the Hanabila, great, great scholar of the Hanabila, who wrote many books uh, and even compiled the book of Hadith that um, Imam Shokani did a sharh of, did a uh, explanation of known as Nail al-Awtar, um, so he's a great scholar of al-Islam and he's from Usra al um, He had many, he had a very eventful life. His life was full of many events, many hawadith happened. The Mongolian invasion, um, uh, speaking and trying to call to the Sunnah at a time when the Sunnah was not, um, if you like, um, spreading in a way in which it should. There was, it was an asr of ta'asub. It was a time of a lot of ta'asub. So even for you to even come out with statements of fiqh that were mukhalif, that were against what everyone was upon, it was a problem. So even one of the things that even got him into trouble was even his, his issue of talaq. Of talaq, for example. What counts as three uh, 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 times in which the talaq becomes ba'in? Become, you, you, you separate in, in totality. So even these masail got him into some trouble, for example. And when it comes to the aqeedah, he tried to do tahrir of the aqeedah of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Okay? He tried to uh, 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 break down and explain the aqeedah of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, and he got into a lot of trouble. Not because of the, the aqeedah, but because he said that this is the aqeedah of the salaf. That's what got him into trouble. They said to him, look, <laughs> if you say this is your aqeedah, khalas, well, you can spread it. But don't say this is the aqeedah of Ahmad and Sufyan al-Thawri and Malik and the Sahaba. Okay? Because um, if you say that, then you mean that we're wrong. And they didn't want to accept that. That's why in his, in his Lamiya, you know, he says, وَهَذَا اعْتِقَادُ شَافِعِيٍّ وَمَالِكٍ وَأَبِي حَنِيفَ ثُمَّ أَحْمَدُ يُنْقَلُوا فَنِ اتَّبَعْتَ سَبِيلَهُمْ فَمُوَفَّقٌ وَنِ اتَّبَعْتَ فَمَا عَلَيْكَ مُعَوَّلُ Or however he said it like that, okay? He says in, 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 Lami, in his Lamiya. So he got into a lot of trouble. He didn't marry. Um, and that was the ad of many ulama of that time. We're not, he, he, he didn't live in a time where there was television and things like this. A person can go and not marry. Okay. Um, he died in prison. He had illustrious students of, of Islam. If you know the students of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, great students that he had. So for example, Ibn Kathir. We all have in our masjid somewhere Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir was his student. 
Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyyah was another student of Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Muflih, the great alim of Islam, the great faqih, is his student. Imam al-Dhahabi, another imam of, of, of hadith. The person who wrote Seer al-A'lam al-Nubala, great compilation, Tariq al-Islam, the history of al-Islam, okay? And many other books and even hadith as well. So he had many, many students. And despite him being a polarizing figure, many people supported him as well. He had many supporters. Many supporters supported him. And if you look at the way ulama author their books, and sorry for not starting the risala, but just as a brief introduction, when you look at the way some ulama author books, I would categorize them into a few types. Well, one type, the ulama who they write, if you like, curriculums, they write kutub mutun ilmiya. So for example, you have some ulama, he will write a book, how to learn usul al-fiqh, for example. Another one will write a book, how to learn a hadith. What are the qawaid of hadith? What are the qawaid of lugh al arabiya of Arabic? What are the qawaid of hadith? And this is how they write their books. They don't get into uh, back and forth, even historically. And then you have some ulama, their books are rasail, back and forth. They're corresponding with others. And this is what you find with many of the, of the, of the books of Ibn Taymiyyah. They're corresponding. He's corresponding with this one. He's speaking to that one. This one is asking him this. He's asking this one. Yani, and even at the same time, he has books as well. But he wasn't like some ulama. That the only thing they left behind is, for example, um, how to study this or how to study that. No, there was correspondence. So even from Ibn Taymiyyah, even from his Rasail, you can get a nub that you can even have an understanding of the way and the tumultuous ittirab that was going on in the society at the time. Okay? So even this, so for example, an example is Aqidah wa Satiya. Aqidah wa Satiya was, was asked, was, 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 was written to him, or it was a risala. That was that he was asked to write by Radiyuddin al Wasati. Radiyuddin al Wasati was an alim from a, from a place in Iraq known as al Wasat. Al Wasat doesn't even exist anymore. It's a Medina Mahjura Tamaman. Nobody lives in the city of al Wasat. This one as well, khalas, this one, the su'al, it says here, Su'ali Abil Qasim ibn Yusuf ibn Muhammad al Tajibi al Sabti al Maghribi. So this is an alim from Maghrib who's asking him this question. Sabd now is 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 a, is Maghrib, but it's under Spain. It's under the control of Spain. Whereas before, all of Spain was under the control of the Maghrib. Afahak the dunya, the dunya had the hali tanqalib. Okay, yomun lak wa yomun alayk. One day is for you, one day is against you. Hakada. So, Shaykh al-Islam uh, 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 is asked this question, and inshallah Taala will start. It says, "Yatafadl Sayyiduna al-Shaykh al-Faqih al-Imam." الفاضل العالم بقية السلف وقدرة الخلف مبدع المغرب أو مبدع المغرب والمعرب المفصح أعلم من لقيت ببلاد المشرق والمغرب تقي الدين أبو العباس أحمد بن تيمية أبقى الله بركته. Basically, يعني we we say that's pleasantries. He's praising the sheikh. We don't need to go break down every single word by saying. Our sheikh, our teacher, our murabbi, okay, the one of the most knowledgeable people we've seen in the Muslim world, sharqan wa gharban, east and west. We're asking him, Abu Taymiyyah about a question. Uh, what, what you find also when it comes to these masail is that perhaps even this paragraph was not written by the person who asked the question. It could be the kalam of the nasikh. The nasikh is the person who's writing the risala. Before, they didn't have printers. So the nasikh, before the book starts, قال الشيخ بقية السلف كذا 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 كلام مش طويل it's, it's a lot of مبالغة in praising the person. But this is what would happen in the beginning of the books. So we don't know, maybe this is the kalam of the nasikh. Okay? Of the person who wrote the book. But then what is he saying? What's this book about? بأن يوصيني بما يكون فيه صلاح ديني ودنياي. This person, okay, Abu Qasim Al Maghribi, is asking Sheikh Al Islam to give me a wasiya. I will explain what a wasiya is. That will help me in my deen and my dunya. Ah, so he's asking Sheikh, okay, give me something in Al Islam 
provide me with some advice in Islam that will help me with my deen and my dunya. That's just it. Okay? وَيُرْشِدَنِي إِلَىٰ كِتَابٍ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ اِعْتِمَادِي فِي عِلْمِ الْحَدِيثِ Guide me, okay, to that which will, which I can rely upon, okay, in ilm al-hadith, kathalika fi ghayrihi min al-ulum al-shari'ya, and other than that, in the knowledge of the sharia, wa yunabbihani ala afdal al-a'mal al-saliha ba'd al-wajibat. Also, give me some nasiha of the best actions I can do بعد الواجبات, after the wajibat, because the best actions are the wajibat. What is good after the wajibat? وَيُبَيِّنَ لِي أَرْجَحَ الْمَكَاسِبِ And also, Shaykh, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, okay, clarify to me what is the best way to make halal income, halal makasib. What's the best way to get risk, which is halal? كل ذلك على قصد الإيماء والاختصار. And يعني why I'm asking this is or, or when you answer this question, all of what I'm asking, I'm asking it for you to give it to me with brevity. Don't I don't want something which is طويل ممل. Stuff which is so long it becomes boring. I can't read it, and I don't want it to be قصير مخل. To the point where I read it, and then after there's there's nothing. Give me something which is short, concise, and يعني, I can rely upon it. This is why they say خير الكلام ما دل. I mean ما ما قل ودل. The best words that you can give to someone is when it's a little bit of little bit of words, but it has large meaning. Don't go on and on and on and on on for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes, and there's not, the fatty they go. Sometimes the kalam is the best. It's just a kalam which is concise. Give it to me. Give me the zubda. Zubda to kalam. Give me the what we need, the concise, the lub. Give me the essence of what you're saying. Okay? And then he says, Wallahu uh, ta'ala yahfudhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Wassalamu al kareemu alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And, you know, basically giving, sending, sending his greetings upon the Shaykh. So. We know the reason why Shaykh Al Islam wrote this risala. Because this person from Al Maghrib wanted to know how to earn some halal money, how to do good deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he can gain some hadith that will help him in knowledge and things like that. This is why he asked this question. And generally speaking, the ulama, when they write their book, they'll give you the reason as to why they are authoring the book Aslan, why they're authoring the book. They'll give it to you in the in the in the muqaddima in the beginning of the book, and this is known as buraatul istihlal. That's what the ulama they call it. Okay, it's almost it means like any um, the, a clever way of opening your book, a clever way of introducing your book, or a good way of introducing your your book. فأجاب الشيخ الإسلامي بحر العلوم ابن تيمية رحمه رحمه الله ورضي الله عنه. So Sheikh Islam responded basically. Now, when they keep calling Shaykh al-Islam Bahr al-Ulum, Shaykh al-Islam, one thing that none of his detractors would say about Shaykh al-Islam was that he didn't have any knowledge. They couldn't say that. Shaykh al-Islam completed his education by 20, but nobody could say that he had no ilm. Not even his detractors can say he had no ilm. So even uh, Imam al-Zahabi, when he wrote about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, you know, even though I differed with Sheikh al-Islam in the way he dealt with the Mukhalifun. So this shows that Ibn, uh, his student, Imam al-Zahabi, he's not following Sheikh al-Islam in every single thing. He said, even though me, Imam al-Zahabi, I didn't agree with every single thing that Sheikh al-Islam did in being such a polarizing figure. But I can say that I never saw anyone that had ilm like this man, especially his quwwat al-istihdar. He was able to just bring things up from his from his brain, what he studied. He could make it, he could bring it very quickly. And you find this in the Kalam of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He brings things, you think, subhanAllah, somebody would have to do research to find some of the topics that he speaks about and how quickly he's just writing it down and saying it. And he also said that he was... أعلم الناس بالمتون meaning that when the hadith was um, when the hadith was present 
he was one of the strongest people that could extrapolate ahkam from the mutun. He was so strong in that, okay? Um, so even his detractors could never say that this man had no uh, had no uh, had no uh, 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 ilm or that he was a person who came with something which was muzayyaf, which was which was made up. No, it wasn't like that at all. So let's start, inshaAllah Taala. He says, "Now is Sheikh Al Islam, rahmatullahi alayhi, is speaking, and he says, am al wasiyya As for the wasiyya fama a'lamu." وصية أنفع من وصية وصية من وصية الله ورسوله لمن عقلها واتبعها. He said, as for the best wasiya, then I don't know of any wasiya which is better than the wasiya of Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Messenger for the one who understands it and follows it. What is أول الوصية؟ وصية it means to impart something onto someone else. To impart something onto someone else. Generally speaking though, generally speaking in the Sharia, when we're speaking in fiqh, then wasiya is something that a person can give in terms of wealth before they die. That's the wasiya. Okay. Now, a lot of the time we get things mixed up. We think that al wasiya or people mix up a will and a wasiya. In the UK, a will and a was an, an Islamic will and a wasiya are two different things. In the UK, you write a will before you die. You say, "All my money is going to go to this person. All my money is going to go to some people say my dog or something like that. All my money is going to go to this charity, and it has to be." implemented and given before, I mean, after the death of the person. In Al-Islam, the wasiya is given, of course, after the person's death, but you can't say, I give my this, my son, all of my wealth. After a person dies, your mal, your wealth is given to your waratha. Shi'ta am abayt. If they haven't broken the rules of, of receiving wealth, they're going to receive their wealth. You can't say I give all of my money to one child and salam alaikum, nobody gets not, nothing else. You don't have that choice. So even when it comes to the wasiya, we have to understand what the wasiya is. We have to understand what the wasiya in of itself is and inshaAllah ta'ala, maybe we can speak about that at another time. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in the, in the famous hadith, inna Allah qad a'ata kulla dhi haqqin haqqahu fala wasiyyata li warith, for example. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every single thing's haqq there's no wasiya for the person who's already going to inherit, for example. But then there's many tafasil on, on, on this issue. We're not going to get into that. But wasiya has a lot of meanings. In the Quran, for example, Allah says, وَصَيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا That we have given a wasiya, we have imparted upon mankind to be good to his parents. So wasiya linguistically is to impart something, to tell someone, to, uh, uh, someone something that, that, that obviously tell them to do something or, or impart upon someone advice. So Ibn Taymiyyah said that the best wasiyah is the wasiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, and his messenger. Qala ta'ala, he quotes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَقَدَ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the people and the Mufassirun is Allah told is saying this hadith, I mean in this ayah of the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told those people before us who were given the book that they should يعني, uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَوَصَّ النَّبِيُّ مُعَاذًا لَمَّا بَعْثَهُ إِلَى الْيَمَنِ فَقَالْ يَا مُعَاذ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلِقِ الْحَسَنَ This is one of the important parts of what Shaykh al-Islam is trying to talk about. This hadith is the wasiyah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Mu'adh ibn Jabal was a great scholar of al-Islam. He was a great scholar of Al-Islam and he was from the Ansar. He was a Sahabi as well, of course. He was from the Ansar, meaning that he was from those people that received the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he came to Al-Madina. There's two types of Sahabas, generally speaking. You have the Muhajirun, 
those people that they were with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mecca. The old Muslims, some of them went to Habasha and things like that. Some of them, uh, uh, naam, basically those people, the Muhajirun. The Ansar and Muhajir means the people who, the migrators. Those people who left Al-Mid, they, they left Mecca. They left their Balda. Okay? And then you have the Ansar. The Ansar are Ahlul Medina. They received the message and they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The Ansar and the Muhajirun are two different types of people. The Ansar are farmers. Ahlul Zira'ah. They farm calm people. The Muhajirun, Ahlu Mecca, there's no zira'a, business. Where's the money, brother? Ahlu Tijara, let's, let's, let's get to business. Yani, khalas. So even when they went to Al Medina, Salamu Alaikum, they started doing their Tijara. And they, you know, but the, the Ansar, la, 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 farming and livestock and mashallah, yani, al umur, mashia, khalas. Just, yani, lakin Ahlu Mecca, Ahlu Mecca, Ahlu business, Tijara. Yani, unasi arifuna Tijara, they know their Tijara. What they say about Ahlu Mecca, Ahlu Mecca adra bi shi'abiha. Ahlu Mecca, they know where the water is, where the water springs are. Ahl Mecca, they know. You don't have to come to Mecca and tell them how to do things. Ahl Mecca, we, they know what's going on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. They know what's going on. Okay? So Ahlu Mecca, when they came to even to, when they came, this is a time there was no injections. And there was no modern medicine. When they went to even Al Medina, they became sick. All of them had the flu, fever, this and that. They had to climatize the environment. Mu'adh ibn Jabal was one of those people who became Muslim okay, around the time the Mishnah of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to al Medina. But he has some manaqib, he has some good, uh, what do you call it, characteristics. The Mishnah of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And he said, Arhamu ummati bi ummati Abu Bakrin. The most, the softest, or the one that has the most rahmah, the most mercy to my ummah, from my ummah to my ummah, is Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. fi deen illahi umar. And the one that is the firmest when it comes to the religion of Allah, meaning that when it comes to halal, when it comes to haram, when it comes to being fair and being just, and somebody who's going to give you justice, Umar radiallahu anhu. وَأَسْدَقُهَا حَيَاءً عثمان. The one that has the most haya, shyness, good characteristics. Uthman radiallahu anhu. وَأَعْلَمَهُمْ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ مُعَاذ And the one that knows the most about halal and haram is Mu'adh. He knows the most about halal and haram. وَأَفْرَضُهُمْ زَيْد The one who knows the most... <coughs> The one who knows the most about, uh, what do you call it, about inheritance is Zayd. Okay. وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَمِينٍ For every ummah, there's an Ameen, a trustworthy person. وَأَمِينُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أَبُوْ عُبَيْدَةِ Okay. الجراح. أبو عبيدة, أبو عبيدة, عفواً, is the, mo- is the Ameen of our ummah. So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Praise his companions for the characteristics that they held. And he said that the one that has the most knowledge of halal wal haram is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Okay, so look at this nasiha that Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah is going to tell us now. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh to Yemen. He didn't send Abu Bakr, he didn't send Uthman, he didn't send Abu Ubaidah, he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal لِأَنَّهُ كَانَ أَعْلَمَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ He was the most knowledgeable in halal wal haram and he sent him to Yemen because Yemen were Ahlul Kitab, they weren't Muslim yet so he's sending them there an ambassador to give them Al-Islam okay, so what does he say? what's the advice that the Prophet ﷺ is giving to Mu'adh that he's going to a new qawm, a new group of people yes they speak Arabiya but they're not like us, they're not from Ahlul Hijaz, they're Ahlul Yemen, they're the people of Yemen. When you interact with this new group of people, how do you interact with them, Ya Mu'adh? Okay, so this is now talking about the akhlaq that the Sheikh was asking from Al Maghrib. Give me something that can help me in my akhlaq, in my religion, in my makasib. What does the Prophet say to Mu'adh? He says, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. 
fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be. When you do a bad deed, follow up the bad deed with the good deed, okay? And the good deed, inshallah, will wipe out the bad deed. Interact with the people with good akhlaq. You see, you're a new person there in this land. Interact with them in a good way because you're there to send, you're there to uh, spread al Islam. And now Sheikh Al Islam is going to speak about even Mu'adh ibn Jabal and some of his manaqib, some of his characteristics. He says, وَكَانَ مُعَاذ أَنْ مُعَاذ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بِمِنْزَلَةٍ عَالِيَةٍ That he had with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a very, very high status. فَإِنَّهُ قَالَ لَهُ Okay, the Prophet, indeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I mean, indeed, the Prophet Allah said to Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, O oh Mu'adh, Wallahi inni la'uhibbuk. Wallahi, I love you, Mu'adh. And even here is a ishara. There's a point that we need to understand that from the, what we can extrapolate from what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said is that it's jaiz for us to say to our Muslim, Akhi al-Kareem, uhibbuka fi Allah. I love you for the sake of Allah. And also, if a person has a characteristic which is khair, we can say it without trying to overly praise him. If we say this person in our jama'ah, he's the person that knows the most Quran from our jama'ah. This one, he's the most softest person in our jama'ah. That one, he's the fairest person in our jama'ah. You can say this. And what we're going to find here is that the, that the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would praise one another in a way which was positive. يعني, you could call it in modern day times taqwiyah to that يعني, building a person's character strengthening a person's character by telling them okay look you have these sifat يعني, go and يعني, strengthen them and يعني, be better at them so what happens وَكَانَ يُرْدِفُهُ وَرَاءَهُ Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam Mu'adh ibn Jabal would يعني, would ride behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-radif is not just someone that rides behind. A radif is also someone who, in the, in the time of when you were traveling, in the time of Allah وسلم, people would take turns on the camel. One person would be on the camel and the other person would be the radif, would be like behind. So when the other one gets tired, the other one jumps on and things like that. So he was the radif of the Messenger of Allah وَسَلَّمُ and that he was the most knowledgeable person of halal or haram. And that on Yawm al he will be the leader of the ulama. On Yawm al Mu'adh ibn Jabal will be the leader of the ulama, carrying like a kind of emblem, signaling that these are, we are the ulama. And from his fadl, from his virtue, أنه بعثه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مبلغا عنه داعيا مفقها ومفتيا وحاكما إلى أهل اليمن. From the character, from the characteristics of Mu'adh bin Jabal, from his fadl, from his grace, is that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم chose him, Mu'adh, okay, مبلغا عنه وداعيا to be a representative and to be to represent him and to give دعوة on his behalf. وَدَاعِيًا <coughs> And a caller to Al-Islam مُفَقِّهًا A person who had fiqh of the religion had understanding of the religion وَمُفْتِيًا And as a mufti there وَحَاكِمًا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ يَمَنْ And to be a person who will rule in the affairs of Ahl Yemen Let's just break this down quickly There's a few masail we can even just break down personally Number one, he's a مُفَقِّهًا مُفَقِّه Someone who has understanding of the religion. The Messenger of Allah said in the hadith, Man yuridillahu bihi khayran, yufaqihu fi deen Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for, he makes him, he gives him fiqh of the religion. So generally speaking, fiqh is an understanding of halal and haram, what you should do, what you should not do. Okay? And the ulama have like a definition of it, you know. Uh, I think it's adillatul fiqh, ma'rifatul fiqh, يعني ال um, uh, uh, what's the, 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 the definition of fiqh? Um, you have uh, uh, no, 
معرفة الأحكام الشرعية العملية المكتسبة من أدلتها التفصيلية. Some along those lines. For you to have understanding of fiqh, okay, um, from its sources, بالتفصيل, in detail. So you know how to do wudu. You know, the, you know how to stand for the salah. You know how to do ruku' properly. You know what to say in the salah. When you're standing for the salah, you're not saying at-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. No, you know you have to say al-fatihatu al-kitab, for example. You know that, for example, after you finish the salah, you say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You turn around, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. You know the different dua. You know that when you go to the marketplace, how to act. You know when you're with your family, what to do. You know when you go to the toilet, you go in with your left foot and you leave your right foot and you can make the dua. You know, for example, example uh, 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 the different ahkam of the religion you know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know what kufr is you know what iman is you know what tawheed is you're able to teach your community this is the person that Mu'adh ibn Jabal was okay a faqih a faqih as ulama is a support someone alladhi yashtaghilu bil fiqh a faqih okay and the faqih as the ulama say is, he's a person that if you ask him a question, he can answer it. Either, either he yastahdir, the mas'ala, he knows the mas'ala in his, in his heart, he's memorized it, he knows it, understands it. Or he'll say to you, listen, you ask me this question, the mas'ala is not right here, but I've got the ability to go back and give you the answer and understand what I'm reading. And I'll come back. Maybe give him a day or two or something. So is it a shart? Is it a condition that the faqih knows jumlatu masail al fiqh? Is it a condition that the faqih has to know every single mas'ala of fiqh in existence? No, it is not. It's just enough that he has understanding of the sharia and most of the adilla of fiqh and most of the masail that when he goes to read when he goes to read on this masail, he can comprehend and understand it and give you the, the correct view that he believes is the sawab that is correct. But it is not a condition that the faqih knows every single mas'ala. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. And also, not only was he a faqih, he was a mufti. He gave a fatwa. Okay, he could give fatawa, rulings on the religion. And he was a hakim, like a judge. There's a difference between the hakim and the mufti. Qawlul hakimi lazim. وَقَوْلُ الْمُفْتِي لَيْسَ بِلَازِمْ The قول of the hakim is lazim. The ruling of the hakim يَرْفَعُ الْخِلَافِ It stops any kind of differing between parties. When you go to the qadi in the sharia, when you go to the qadi in the sharia, when the, shari when the qadi makes a ruling, the ruling is muhkam and it, and it is binding. You must do it. When you go to the mufti to ask him a question, it's not binding. It's قول غير لازم. It's not lazim. It's not binding. Okay. Even when it comes to the hakim in the sharia, ah, it is permissible for people to go and seek the hakim that they want, the judge that they want. So, it, so in the time of the the companions, they would go to someone that they knew had good judgment, and they would ask him be a judge for us in this little masala that we have. It's not a shart, a condition that you must go to such and such a person. No, you can go to someone that you trust on. I'm talking about even just day, day, daily issues, for example. That doesn't mean now I'm saying to you guys, go and become uh, hakim. And not, I'm not saying like that. I'm saying that in Islam, in the Sharia, there's tawassu' in certain masail. There's uh, a breadth of, of, of uh, not freedom, but there's a breadth of, there, there's, there's enough room to explore in certain masail. Things are not closed. Okay, let's carry on, inshaAllah ta'ala. So he went to Ahlul Yemen. Ah, there's another mas'ala here. He went to Ahlul Yemen as a da'i ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, this is a delil that the people of the Jaziratul Arab can yatakallamuna bil Arabiya as well. That they always speak Arabic. Why? Because there's people who now have shak in everything that Islam says. So what they say is, there was Fusha Arabiya or Arabiya al Fasiha. Old Arabic never existed, they say. They say that old Arabic never ever existed. And that the Lahjat, that the Lahjat always existed. And that the Hal was like now. 
that is not the case. Yes, <coughs> there were different lahajat, not in the modern sense of uh, Egypt speaking one way and things like that, no. But the people had different words for different things. You read it in the books of Nahu. However, what we can understand is that, no, they were mutually, they could all understand one another when they spoke Arabiya. So this is a delil that Arabiya, that all of the people spoke Arabiya because there's nothing in this hadith that says that Mu'adh ibn Jabal had a tarjuman, had a translator or something like that. So even there is a delil that the people of that region spoke Arabiya because we know that there's some mustashriqoon and other orientalists and other people that have shak on everything you give them. Everything you give them, uh, even if you put يعني, a glass of water in front of them, they say, I have shak in the water. طيب. Um, and then insha'Allah ta'ala we carry and it says وَكَانَ يُشَبِّهُهُ بِإِبْرَاهِيمَ الْخَلِيلِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَإِبْرَاهِيمُ إِمَامُ النَّاسِ وَكَانَ إِبْنُ مَسْعُودِ رضي الله عنه يقول إن معاذا كان أمة قانة لله حنيفا ولم يكن من المشركين تشبيها له بإبراهيم okay. and he was also compared to Ibrahim alayhi salam okay. and Ibn Mas'ud would say a delightful statement to him. He would say something pleasing to him. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ibrahim being a ummah in and of him, in of itself. Ibn Mas'ud would say, Inna mu'adhan kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. He would change the word and say, this is mu'adh. Mu'adh is an ummah in and of itself. So look at the relationship of the sahaba with one another. Yani enforcing the good characteristics that they have. Encouraging one another, telling one another, MashaAllah, you have knowledge. This one has this, this one has that. Okay. And then it says, ثم إنه وصاه هذه الوصية فعلم أنها جامعة وهي كذلك لمن عقلها مع أنها تفسير الوصية القرآنية. Okay. So now he's come. He's, this is another مسألة. He says, ثم إنه وصاه بهذه الوصية. Look. Prophet ﷺ gave Mu'adh this wasiyah, and we're still at the beginning of the kitab to a certain extent. We're going to get into uh, meaning of the, what this means. It says, ثُمَّ إِنْهُ وَصَّاهُ هَذِهِ الْوَصِيَّةِ Prophet ﷺ gave Mu'adh this wasiyah, فُعْلِمَ أَنَّهَا جَامِعَةً That this wasiyah is jami'ah. It is all-encompassing. It encompasses a lot of masail. You have some, for example, adilla in the sharia, they're not jami'ah. And you have some adil in the sharia, adil meaning dalil, that are jami'ah. What do I mean by that? There's some dalil, they are specific to a specific time and a specific place. Prophet ﷺ said, Salli qa'iman fa'in lam tastati' faqa'idan, for example. <coughs> this hadith is just used for salah. Then you have other hadith which can be used in so many different aspects of the religion. لا ضرر ولا ضرار, for example. So many adilla that can be used in so many abwab of the religion, so many different chapters in the religion, they're encompassing. So, <coughs> Shaykh al-Islam is saying that this hadith is one of those ahadith which are jami'ah. They enter into many different abwab of al-Islam, many different chapters, many different facets of al-Islam, this hadith can be applied to. Why is it as for, or, 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 or the, 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 the way in which this hadith is jami' is ill-encompassing, is shown by the following. The abd, he has two rights upon him. حَقٌ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He has a right, he has the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. وَحَقٌ لِعِبَادِهِ And a haq for his ibad. And this is even a qa'idah, you could even write that down. That the slave, he has two haqs upon him, two rights upon him. حَقٌ عَلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ Okay. أو حَقُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ وَحَقٌ لِعِبَادِهِ these حقوق that he has that are upon him every single person with the rights that you've been given a person can fall short on them sometimes either by not doing that thing that you should be doing in totality, or doing something wrong. 
يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran وخلق الإنسان ضعيفة man can have been made weak يا أخي man can have been made, made weak some people يعني when it comes to shahawat they can't control their shahawat مهما حاول how much they try they can't control their shahawat in one way or another shahawat doesn't just mean desire shahawat is يعني impulse your impulse يعني some people يعني the غضب he is angry very quickly and he, he can't control it he knows he has a mess he knows he he knows he needs to control his anger but يعني it has to come out some other people it comes out in different ways but Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that insan يعني بني آدم he's ضعيف even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put these حقوق upon him he will fall short either by not doing it or doing it and then after doing something haram هكذا الإنسان هكذا الإنسان إنسان is ضعيف okay so then what does he say فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم in, in response to that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said اتق الله حيث ما كنت fear Allah wherever you are يا معاذ, you're going to Al-Yemen. You're going to a qawm they don't know about Al-Islam. You are Bani Adam. We make mistakes. اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be. So look at the mas'ala, يعني, how he's breaking it down. What Imam al-Dhahabi said about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. يعني, كأنه أعلم الناس بال, بال, بالمتون. يعني he knew how to extrapolate uh, rulings from the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we'll, we'll stop this session shortly insha'Allah ta'ala. And insha'Allah we'll, you know, it's after Fajr, we'll carry on insha'Allah ta'ala with more detail later. So then he goes on to say, اتق الله حيث ما كنت هذه كلمة جامعة. Okay. Uh, these are, yeah, like I said, a, a statement which is jami' which, which is unifying, which is all encompassing. Okay, wherever you may be. This statement, wherever you may be, that wherever you may be here is a يعني, um, is a tahqiq, is another reminder, is a greater reminder, is a is a emphasis on the need for a person to have taqwa fi sirri wal alaniya in private and in open may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to have to have uh, uh, taqwa in openness and in secret if you can do that mashallah you're on a good path okay thumma qal wa atbi' al sayyi'ati al hasanata tamhuha follow up a bad deed with a good deed فإن الطبيب okay look at this now Ibn Taymiyyah is going to break down to us the statement of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how بضرب الأمثال by giving us an example by القياس by giving us an analogy okay رد الفرع على الأصل بعلة جامعة بينهما as they say in قياس for you to connect dots the asal, the origin with the far, with something that they, that shares between them, with the origin and the example that you're trying to give. So let's say you're trying to give an example, but you're basing it on something else. You bring them together with something that we can all understand. Let me give you an example. One person came to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, yo, ya, ya message of Allah, give me the perm permissibility to commit zina. I'm a young man. I don't know what to do. I have no money. I have nothing. And please allow me to, to fornicate. Prophet ﷺ he gave a mithal to make him understand. Would you like someone to do this with your family, with your sister, with your mother? He said, I'll not like nobody to just come and uh, 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 sleep with my sister and then just walk away and not take care of her or anything. He said, so by that, yeah, and he don't do it to somebody else. ضرب المثال. And what did he say in Arabiya? وَبِالْمِثَالِ يَتَّضِحُ الْمَقَالِ With an example, the, uh, 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 what you're talking about becomes clearer. So what does Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says? He says that when, for example, the Prophet ﷺ says to us, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. فَإِنَّ الطَّبِيبِ مَتَى تَنَاوَلَ الْمَرِيضُ شَيْئًا مُضِرًّا أَمْرَهُ بِمَا يُصْلِحُهُ وَذَنْبُ لِلْعَبْدِ كَأَنَّهُ أَمْرٌ حَتَمٌ والكيس هو الذي لا يزال يأتي من الحسنات بما يمحو السيئات. He said, look at the doctor, look at the tabib. 
فان الطبيب متى تناول متى تناول المريض شيئا مضرا امر بما يصلحه when the person when the sick person takes something which is bad for him what does the tabib say does the tabib say <coughs> take more of it take more of the bad stuff take more of the haram take more of the alcohol in fact we have our sheikh our tabib here he can give us he can tell us if it's true or not okay the tabib will tell you la, la, la. you've taken this thing you now have to to get that out of your system to cure you of that thing you need to take this thing Ya Akhi Al Karim, you're dehydrated, you've drunk an alcohol, you have your you you dehydrated your system because khamar it dehydrates you. Akhi Al Karim, drink water now. Drink, I don't know, liters and liters of water. Ya Akhi Al Karim, all of us we have a limit. You can't drink any oh, liters and liters of water. You feel sick. You're gonna feel sick. But maybe this person is so dehydrated, maybe they're giving him some medication to make him more hydrated, and they're telling him, drink the water all the time. A person doesn't want to do that. Even medication. Medication, it is bitter, the pill is bitter, but you have to take it, يعني, in order for you to do islah of your bedin, to do islah of your bedin. So the Sheikh is saying that even the tabib, he tells a sick person to do islah of his own bedin. So then he says, the, 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 a, person, a person is going to sin whether he likes it or not. So the smart person, the kayis person, is the person who just like the tabib says to the ill person, Ya Akhi al Kareem, take this medication. He also, the sinful person, after doing something haram, he does good deeds, almost like taking medication to wipe away the bad deed. After you do haram, take, يعني, remove the bad deed. And this is a qaida for, for all of us here. And here, even in this, uh, in this, uh, in this hadith, there's even dalil of the taqreer of the aqeed of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes of Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. If you, for example, you commit a sin, you commit something haram, and then you lock yourself in a door, Allah will never forgive me. What have I done? Kada kada kada. Your ilaqa, your understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. Akhi al Kareem, no matter how much haram you've done, come to the Masjid, pray Salat al Fajr. No matter how much haram you did, pray salah in the jama'ah, read the Qur'an. Don't let the shaitan say to you, subhanallah, who am I to read the Qur'an? I did kadha wa kadha wa kadha, I'm not good enough to read the Qur'an. La, iqra' al-Qur'an, read the Qur'an. Make tawbah, tawbu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Pray, pray, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did the thing again, make tawbah again. Yani, it's your dawa. The more you try, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you. As long as you're sincere, Allah will make a way out for you, even with the then that you're committing. Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make a makhraj for you. You know, we're not saying that, subhanAllah, in order for you to have taqwa, you have to leave all the haram behind. Of course, that is the best thing to do. But as he said here, the person, Bani Adam, he's qasir. He has qusur in him. So even though, we have qusur, we have this, and qusur meaning يعني, shortcomings. Even though we have qusur, ya ikhwan, we still have to try our best, like the tabib, to take the medication and cure ourselves of our qusur. Okay, and we're going to leave it here, inshallah ta'ala. Don't worry, inshallah ta'ala, okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then he says, al kays huwa ladhi la yazalu yati bil hasanat wa yamhu sayyat. al kays he's using this word kays from the hadith of the Mishra of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Muslimu kays fatin. Muslim, the Muslim, he's smart, he's aware, he doesn't fall into the same mistakes again and again and again. So then he says, وَإِنَّمَا قَدَّمَ فِي لَفْظِ الْحَدِيثِ السَّيِّئَةِ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مَفْعُولَةً لِأَنَّ الْمَقْصُودُ هُنَا مَحْوُهَا لَا فِعْلُ الْحَسَنَةِ فَصَارَ كَقَوْلِهِ فِي بَوْلِ الْعَرَابِ صُبُّ عَلَيْهِ ذُنُوبًا مِنْ مَا وَيَنْبَغِي أَنْ تَكُونَ الْحَسَنَاتِ مِنْ جِنْسِ السَّيِّئَاتِ فَإِنَّهُ أَبْلَغُ فِي الْمَحْوِي وَالذُّنُوبِ يَزُولُ مُوْجِبُهَا بِأَشْيَاء So then the Shaykh, Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatullahi alayhi, basically says that when the Prophet ﷺ, he brought the word سَيِّئَ, leave a bad deed with a 
take off a, a follow a bad deed with a good deed. He said the Prophet ﷺ brought this wording in the very beginning, okay, to almost show us that. Yeah, and he, he brought this word for, uh, in the beginning to show us that in order for us to get rid of a bad deed, we have to do a, we have to do a good deed. So. Yeah, and he, it's almost as if the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us how to level out the bad deed, how to get rid of the bad deed first. We can't do, for example, hasanat, and we've still got sayyat. No, how do we get rid of the sayyat first? We get rid of the sayyat by doing a hasana straight after it. Okay, it's done. Inshallah ta'ala, of course, with tawbah and things like that. And then from there, we can... We can, inshallah ta'ala, try to change. The same way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he ordered the companions before he even told the A'rabi, the, when the A'rabi, when the Bedouin came to the masjid, bala fi ta'ifat al-masjid, fazajrahu al-nas. Into the corner of the masjid, just started to urinate. Prophet before he went with the solution of telling him this is not a place to urinate, this is not the place to uh, go to the toilet, he told them, look, clean up the urination first. We have to clean the masjid first before we can tell him how he behaved. Let's clean the place. Let's get a, a small ina, uh, 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 let's get a small little vessel, clean it up, let's clean the mess first, get rid of the najasa that's here, and then we can tell him, يعني, we can't go to the masjid and ask, this is not the place of urination, this is not a toilet. But in order for us to get rid of that first, we need to get rid of the athrul bowl. So same way, the same way the Prophet did that is the same way here. He's telling us before we even do islah of ourselves, let's try to get rid of the sins that we have by doing a good deed to take care of the bad deed. And there's a hadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, ما نهي, ما uh, that which I've told you to stay away from, stay away from it in totality. That which I've told you to do, do as hard as, as much as you can. Some ulama, they extrapolate from this hadith, try to get rid of as many sins as you can. If you get rid of as many sins as you can, then inshallah ta'ala, you have a fighting chance, then doing a lot of good deeds and plenty of bad deeds. It doesn't mean that you don't do any good deeds, la, but try to get rid of the dhunub. Getting rid of dhunub is very, very important, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so inshallah ta'ala, we've done our... Our two pages of our risala, insha'Allah ta'ala, and there's going to be much more detail, insha'Allah. He's still just in the very beginning, insha'Allah ta'ala, but insha'Allah ta'ala, we'll definitely finish this on time. And insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, you, you know, we want people to, you know, go back to sleep and people have umur and things that they need to do. So we don't want to take more of your time, insha'Allah ta'ala. Forgive me for uh, going slightly yani, above time. You know, I tried to keep this at around 40, 45 minutes, insha'Allah ta'ala. The other sessions may be a bit longer, but just جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين